Hi, Mama. Uh, Malcolm? Yeah. Uh, my question is that the uh, conservative uh, media has virtually taken over the country so uh, strongly, I guess, as Trump would say. They've actually, here, I'm from Fort Dodge, Iowa, and they've moved the Mason-Dixon line to the Canadian border. They uh, <laughs> are selling this conspiracy theory things, uh, and it's everywhere you go around here, that's all these people here is Fox News and, and all the little newspapers and AM radio stations are selling this. What's going to happen to our country when Mueller does find something? Is this nation going to go into a civil war? That's what Malcolm was just saying. Yeah. Look, yeah, I've, I mean, you know, these people, we've got Grassley, Ernst, uh, Steve King, my congressman. These people are not going to go against Donald Trump. There is absolutely Jeff, and they, they do it on every issue. They just did it on this shutdown. It's like, oh, they're, they, you know, Democrats only care about those little illegal brown kids instead of your kids. You know? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, look at Charlottesville. I mean, I feel like he's already been trying to foment civil war. Yeah, I feel sorry. Uh, and you're out in Fort Dodge. I mean, you're, you're like almost at the geographic center of the United States. Uh, and you're literally at the geographic center of Iowa. So it must be very interesting for you out there. You know, we do, I'm, I'm afraid to say it, that there, there is a channel uh, in the news media that works on the exact same premise as the Soviet Pravda. They are state-run television, as Steve Schmidt said. Yep. Uh, I was an analyst, on, a guest analyst on Fox News for two years under Tony Snow, who was a journalist right. before he became White House press secretary and a very fair guy. And then no one ever asked me what my 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 voting record was at that time. Mm -hmm. Just assumed because mm -hmm. I was military, I was, I was a Republican. Right. And at that time, I'd become a Democrat. Right. But you know, the question you have to ask, and I and I ask this of everyone who's listening, is. Where does your heart lie? Are you a patriot? A patriot does not stand for an individual. We, we, this whole nation separated from George III on the premise that we as a collective body were, were going to stand for democracy and freedom and our constitution first. I highly recommend everyone who's listening today, go get the soundtrack to Hamilton. Yes. If you haven't seen it. And listen to all of that, you know, even if you don't like rap. Listen to the entire thing. It is a beautiful representation yeah. of how this nation was formed and what the, the precepts of our forming were. And then you will understand what is at stake. Yep. I'm, I wrote a lot to destroy democracy to show that we are under attack. Yep. And that America, meaning America, America, is under attack. And that attack is sustained. Right. And we, are, we have a president of the United States who is actually participating in that attack. We have a Congress that has abdicated I, their authority as a I was having this equal discussion. branch of government. Yeah, I was having this discussion with, some, you know, one of my very far left friends that, talking about when I, when I said we, he goes, ooh, who do you mean? You know, Hillary people, Bernie people, <laughs> Democrats, Republicans. I was like, America, oh, we oh, America. Oh, we America have been attacked. Like, what, I, I think you're right because we've gotten so partisan. It, it's like, that. that's, you know. My problem is, is that, that one third of this nation has decided that they will follow a man. Washington himself right. warned about American tyrants. Uh, the, the founding fathers talked about a president who would become uh, monarch-like. Right. And that the three separate but co-equal branches of government would be the guardrails. But now we have the second branch of government. We have the Congress has decided to become the lapdog of a man, right. not to the Constitution. I stand for the Constitution. I don't know about you and, guys. And you didn't have a Fox News when Nixon was around, as people have said. that this, Fox Somebody News. said Nixon might have survived if Fox News was Roger around. Roger Ailes said he would create Fox News. All right, He told Nixon that he w we need our own media, and from it sprung Fox News. And now it has become prop uh, like a communist propaganda channel. How chilling are these headlines, in fact, because, you know, Media Matters does a good job, yeah. you know, rounding up, you know, obviously there's clips and all that. Sean Hannity, people at the highest level in the DOJ and the FBI must be investigated, must be indicted, and probably many of them thrown in jail. Lou, Do Lou Dobbs calls for U.S. Marshals to take top people in the Justice Department and FBI into custody. Lou Dobbs, it may be time to declare war outright against the deep state. Rush Lindaugh, the deep state may have faked Saddam WMD evidence to damage George W. Bush. Sean Hannity accuses the deep state of an attempted coup, says this makes Watergate looks like like stealing a Snickers. 
Okay, you know, I didn't oh, see that. God. I saw that Lou Dobbs video last night, but I didn't watch it. And this, this, it, it pays for all of you to keep track of the information that's going on. That statement is dangerous. Yeah. I've dedicated my entire life to defending this nation. Yeah. And what we have is to, for someone to call for the U.S. Marshals or the Secret Service, they're literally trying to split law enforcement to consider the FBI as a, 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 a subversive element yeah. within the government and trying to stoke rebellion. Those words are sedition. Well, and uh, Malcolm, we, look what, it up in the what dictionary. you just said about uh, civil war, the guy that just want, tried to go shoot up CNN in Atlanta said, you're fake news, you're fake news. Glenn Beck, when yeah. he was on his rants uh, on, on, on CNN, yep. uh, when he said that very early on in the Obama administration, the, the, the DEA, the BATF, they're coming to take your guns. Well, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a man heard that, got all of his guns, did a hostage barricade with his mother in his house, and then he wanted the SWAT team to come. He killed the first three officers that right. stepped through the door. Right? This is going to increase. This is destabilizing the fabric of the nation. All right? And that's what I fight for. I don't care what your opinion is. You know, I don't care what, what party you're from. Right. You, can, you must stand for America first. And these are the same people, by the way, yeah. who go, freedom, all the time. And it's like, don't I get some of that? Nope. Yep. I know is you know let me spell this out for everyone that um this investigation for those of you who are hanging on to obstruction of justice there are multiple investigations happening here yeah. this is not one investigation yeah. you have maybe 10 different investigations you don't get 18 yeah. of the top financial crime prosecutors in america and the top financial uh yeah. cyber crimes prosecutor right. in America. Well, that, that's what happens when you're, when you're ready to wind things up, as but, the White House says. Yeah, what you have when is just you winding have, down. You have 18 <laughs> separate investigative teams that are going on here. And so if you're talking Jared Kushner's money, that's one investigation. If you're yeah. talking Jared Kushner's counterintelligence investigation, that's another line. If you're talking Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with Veselnitskaya and the rest of that yeah. crew, that's a completely different investigative team. Each one of these, and the least... The, the lowest hanging fruit was finding Mike Flynn lying to the FBI, Papadopoulos yeah. working essentially with the Russians, lying to the FBI, and yeah. the lowest of all low hanging fruit, Paul Manafort in international money laundering of up to seventy million dollars. This is the small stuff. Do it with start with obstruction of justice, and you see how does this guy punch? How does he defend? How is he you know counteract the operations that? the uh, Office of the Special Counsel is going to levy you on. Right. And then you will get your game plan. Donald Trump tends to fold out of, out of, out of narcissism. Right. He tends to sit down and just goes, yes, I did that. What are you going to do about it? Right. So that being said, um, you know, I think that after that, you may find them go after my, I'm still online for, for predicting yeah. Jared Kushner. And his money problems and his yeah. little secret back channels to uh, Russia. to Russia, I, I suspect that they'll probably hit him first with money laundering and then something very close to the Espionage Act. Wow! Just to make sure that he, if he thinks, well, my you know my father-in-law can get me out of money laundering right. because he's president of the United States, and I'll say, yeah, well, you know, you're essentially a, a Russian spy, and you may be, be able, you're not a real spy, but. You know, by asking them for secure communications and a back channel to Moscow, right? right. Um, you know, uh, this information will not look good on anybody. But if there are just so many right. bean balls to throw at their head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I yeah, I mean, actually, <laughs> just a preview of what Trump would be like in a Mueller interview is like you're right, that Lester Holt, like, yeah, it's Trump Russia. I said to myself, uh, this Trump Russia thing, and they just he'll be talking about himself in the third person. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a complete hoax, <laughs> right. and I confess. It's a Democrat hoax, you know, Bob. Bob, can I call you Bob? No, you cannot. You can call me Prosecutor Mueller. You, so it's going to be a few good men thing. I'm an officer. I think I've earned it. All right. You're going to jail, you son of a bitch. I just, okay, I go to that. I just skipped to that part. Now, my point. No. It's, so, yeah, when yesterday, do you see, they asked him, are you uh, concerned about what Jeff Sessions told Mueller? No, not at all. No, I'm not at all concerned. No, I'm not. Because he repeats it like 14 times. Yeah. Seemed yeah. very convincing, didn't it? No, not at all. No, not no, at all. It's not concerned. No.
not concerned enough to go out and try to fire everyone in the chain of command <laughs> who could have been involved with this at any level. Uh, Somebody, oh, Scott Dworkin, who I'm sure you know from your uh, rounds at uh, MSNBC, said two people close to the White House told me yesterday morning Trump was absolutely fuming because Sessions didn't report back in detail on how his interview went with Mueller's team. Apparently Trump was begging Sessions to tell him what questions were asked and Sessions wouldn't tell him much. Oh, my God. I mean, it is just so unconvincing, right, when he's out there. No, uh, are you going to talk to Mueller? Oh, 100%. Are you concerned about no? Not at all. Hmm. I'd, I'd like to see further reporting on that. Only, only in the sense that right. that would be really highly, you know, privileged information. Well, and I'm not sure whether. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, it, the only thing I wonder is just uh, with the amount of obviously with Comey talking to Mueller as well. I mean, just all of the bombshells we're finding out, just even in, about the FBI, right? Him out what's yesterday that he asked McCabe who he voted for. <laughs> Which made him and he appears hugely, to I mean, this amount of interference, you know, then he fires Comey, then he's pressuring Sessions to, you know, make sure Ray fires McCabe. It's just, this amount of interference is so beyond normal, right? That it, yeah, well, absolutely. And, you know, my favorite part of that story about McCabe was, um, and, and what's even more amusing is that today uh, they came out, and, or yesterday they came out and said, well, he was just interested in his background. And it's like, really? Just chatting. And then he went on jihad on McCabe's wife and said right. he was upset that McCabe's wife was a Democrat and had run for office. Yeah, because that's illegal. And, and he, you know, it's absolutely stunning. I'm almost at a loss for words today. Yeah. You know, but I, I, I should keep talking because if I stop, more breaking news will happen. <laughs> we just don't, hang on, I'm checking my phone. <laughs> Travis will come I'm like, on. I'm, no. I'm like refreshing Twitter every <laughs> 10 seconds here. Is there a tweet? <laughs> tweet. Um, yep, as you tweeted and just said, today confirms my estimate by the end of March, Mueller may ta uh, take cataclysmic, uh, cataclysmic acts in Trump-Russia investigation. By then, we'll see if Kushner or Trump Jr. are indicted or turn on Trump. Obstruction of justice is just round one. Well, there's the question of the hour. Are Kushner or Don Jr. going to turn on their respective uh, father-in-law or father? I think they'll try not to. Yeah. And I think that in the end, the infer uh, that, that what will bef befall them Certainly, Kushner has has no immunity here. Yeah, he can he can be pardoned for everything that he's ever done, and Schneiderman in New York will be waiting right there with indictments at the state level for money laundering, for working with the mafia, for working with the Russians, anything because that building is in New York City. Right, and this is what I've said <laughs> numerous times. I'm just that, having way too much fun. Well, I'm, not, give, I, I'm, I'm giving the money back. Are you all? No. <laughs> okay. But this is what I was saying, is that Donald Trump and his team thinks they are dealing with a junior deputy assistant district right. attorney in the state city of New York. Right. And not understanding yeah. that this is the pinnacle right. of American justice I mean, power. It, it, cheap narcissist con man grifters, they always think they're smarter than everybody else, right? They're always one step ahead of everybody. Sure, yeah. absolutely. And, and you know, when you've been empowered to believe that, like Jared Kushner's, but, I mean, this is a guy who, how old is he? 36 or something, mm -hmm. who is told, you're going to solve Middle East peace. You're here to clear, clear up the drug problem. You're here to be the fix-it man for the President of the United States. The guy couldn't get one building funded without without going to the Bank of Spies, the SVB, SEB Bank of Moscow, led by a non-official cover ex-KGB officer. That's where he had to go for and his money. who chooses 666 as an address? Hello. Do you think that's unlucky in any way? <laughs> All of, you know, What's back, the doorman like? Welcome to 666. <laughs> Leave your soul at the door. Leave your soul. Would you like to check your soul? You're really good at that. Thank you. Where's my exorcist music? Sean, come on. Let's step up the game here. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Jared Kushner's building. So smiling, chuckling this morning. This is, there's something <laughs> the about Muttley from. Uh, da, what is that? What I'm doing? Yeah, Muttley? yesterday in Muttley. Yeah, that's going to be the official laugh of the morning. Oh. <laughs> we're going back to wacky weight racers. Mm -hmm. My God, we're whipping it out today, aren't we? <laughs> started with bronies before the show started. Got a deep bench oh. here. <laughs> I'll say. A... Fun to have all that impeachment porn, but it's going to be a lot more mundane than you think. Mm. Uh, but Darn. again. This is a person who will not resign this office. And until oh, he make loses it more fun. that 30% hard base. Yeah. Uh, and I think he'll go through the trial. Uh, oh and, my God. But, like I said, by the end of March, the first, uh, the first 
spitball that's going at his head is, you know, beanball is going to be obstruction of justice. Do you but get to tweet from prison? I'm pretty sure you don't. But, <laughs> oh, um, you know, there's a lot, there are a lot of people who will have to prove that point. Yeah. yeah. I think this, this I, I think that it will have less indictments than Watergate because more people will flip immediately. Wow. Right? Wow, so wow, Like wow. we said yesterday, Let's Steve do... Bannon's not flipping. Yeah. It's a pretty cut and dried case. And all they can do is rule whether the president is above the law or not. And it, if they say the president doesn't have to respond to a subpoena, the president doesn't have to answer questions, which is the question, you know, he's going to try that. He's going to try to say yeah. every word out of my mouth is executive privilege just by, by dint of the fact that I spoke it. Mm -hmm. Well, the precedent has been set with Bill Clinton. You just can't right. up and say that, you know, you're above everything. So he can ask, if they say no, then he can subpoena him, and then he, then he has to, correct, is what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> because... No, I mean, yeah, somebody get because, a lawyer Because on Roger the phone, Stone, but... who knows him better than anybody, is like, do not talk to Mueller, because he knows. First of all, he knows he's going to lie. He can't help himself. Jeff seems to be paying attention. He mm. tweeted, Mueller subpoenas Bannon. N uh, Nunez produces spin memo. Mueller interviews Sessions. Johnson claims secret society in the FBI. Mueller calls in the president. Then what does the GOP do? I mean... Coinky dink. <laughs> coincidence takes a lot of... Nance's law. Planning. That's it. There you go. Um, yeah. I, I, this is... I mean, I, I guess that's what I've been saying. As ridiculous as this is, this deep state stuff, everything you just went off on, you have to go, oh... They know Mueller's close. This this is what white knuckle panic looks like. Yep. I mean, this is beyond buggy. I yeah. mean, we are we are definitely into it now. Oh yeah, everybody tweeted that. Target's getting really buggy. Malcolm's in on staff today. No, <laughs> this is Mafia Don, you know, who, who's who's screaming around the Italian restaurant, shouting out all the secrets while the FBI is monitoring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah Huckleberry. Oh, talk about the, uh, the text messages. Those are the important thing. I think he thinks that there's a great cause for concern uh, that five months worth of text messages have gone missing, oh. uh, particularly given the individual uh, okay. that had part of that process has already been shown to be extremely biased against the president. Mm. We're back to that thing. By uh, the way, missing they things. also said a lot of disparaging things about a lot of Democrats as well. Yeah. Like, yes, they're human beings with opinions, right? I mean... Oh, wow. Yeah, but, you know, missing emails. I love this theme. Text. Which was a Russian intelligence theme pushed after the yeah. Benghazi trials and magnified by the news media. And they thought, yeah. hey, you know, let's break out the Kremlin prey book. That might work right. again. Well, you said that this, it's run by, it's uh, being, you know, powered by Russian bots that release the memo. Hashtag release the memo. It's like, oh, please. Uh, let's go to uh, Lewis in Ohio. You're on with Malcolm. In Ohio, you're on with Malcolm. Hello, Steph. Hi. Hello, Malcolm. Hello. Two of my favorite people. Thank you. Go ahead. You better friends. Right. <laughs> yeah, I have a question about uh, Kevin Nunes. What is up with this gentleman? Uh, what can we do about this memo? What can we do about his obvious affiliation, close affiliation with the White House? What can be done about that? Well, well number one, you know that when all is said and done, I think the state of California is going to be doing something about it this November. Yeah. Have us here is uh, you know, your mom's from that. Yeah, take yeah. Under, take right? out Nunez. Yeah, they're yeah. gone. Cobbler for everybody in That's... Fresno when you vote him out. Have a bake sale. I think I think you know democracy is going to to, to play its course, and the guardrails of uh, American democracy are going to are going to happen. But on the other hand, Devin Nunez might want to consider, and I say this all the time when we're on this show. Yeah, he might want to consider that he is still a citizen, not above the law. He can be held accountable for what he has said and done, yep. if it turns out to be part of a broader conspiracy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Nance live in studio, Bob Seska, Carlos says Rocky, all coming up on the big show. For a long time, I thought that those guys were the guardrail. Yeah. I think General Mattis, to a certain extent, still is. Mm -hmm. I think he won't do anything insane. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he's the kind of guy who will walk right up to the president and tell him what he thinks, and then he'll be ordered to do something, and then that'll be the end of it. General McMaster lost complete faith in him. General yeah. McMaster was a, was a true American hero. Um, you know, he, he fought in the Gulf War when I was there. And let me tell you something. Uh, and Kelly, Kelly is just another person who is a, a, a full-on Trump supporter and may, in fact, be more radical than we ever yeah. thought. Yeah, I agree. I heard about that, but I'm not 
particularly sure how it relates to the current investigation. Like I said earlier, there there are a lot of real estate and money laundering and mafia-related investigations going on now yeah. at, at the Schneiderman level. And uh, here's the best part. The information that's collected by the Mueller investigation yeah. can be used at the state level wow. should it, they determine that this really falls under the purview of the state. The only... And, mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about national level intelligence here being scrubbed down, uh, you know, with some of the top financial crimes lawyers in America yeah. passing that stuff on to say, hey, you know, this is 666, you know. The only thing I've retained about Felix Sater is that he stabbed a guy in the face with a <clears throat> stem of a cocktail glass. I like that how he had a Trump card and everyone and their dog denied that he had anything to do with Trump, including Trump. And There's a bunch of pictures of them, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was photobombed kind of election, though, and I, I'm going to make this warning here uh, on, on staffs. I've made it before on television. Um, this is the kind of op election, since no one believes anything, we know that it could possibly be a Democratic wave election, where it becomes a Democratic wave, and then the Russians deliberately hack mm -hmm. and make it look like, the, and to de invalidate the Democrats' wins, mm -hmm. and to throw the country into chaos by saying, well, they were actually hacked. The Russians were working for the Democrats. Aye, 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 and aye, aye, aye. just imagine, you're talking civil war conditions at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are already, there already is a civil war conditions in the media. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, well the war in the media right. is, is... Yeah, we were saying the guy that just went to shoot up CNN and said, call yeah. you and said, you're fake news. I mean, yeah. there are consequences to these. Um, let me ask you, Malcolm, about uh, uh, Mitch McConnell. Because, because uh, obviously, Joe Biden yesterday was uh, because I, they all knew about this. And it, it, I think the reason that there's going to be so much more panic, as you say, is that this is going to bring this whole party down. Uh, Joe Biden said Mitch McConnell stopped the Obama administration, which we already knew, from speaking out about Russian interference by refusing to sign on to a bipartisan statement of cooperation. Um, uh, Biden expressed re regret in hindsight. <laughs> now a warning. <laughs> he said, had we known uh, what we knew three weeks later, we may have done something more. Biden said Obama worried that without a united front of bipartisanship, speaking out before an election would undermine the legitimacy of the election, Oy, which already was going to be an illegitimate election, but um, in a way that would play into Russia's hands. He said, uh, McConnell's office, I love this, disputed the account pointing to a letter signed by all four congressional leaders sent to the, uh, uh, the Board of State Elector Directors urging cybersecurity precautions. It, the letter, however, did not address Russia specifically or the larger topic of influence beyond voting systems. So, as usual, Mitch McConnell is full of it. When the TV or movie series of Plot to Hack America comes out, uh, they will have to get a, a slightly chubby Leonardo DiCaprio to play <laughs> John Brennan, the CIA director. Mm -hmm. And there will be a scene where he is furiously, he, where he picks up the phone, he calls the director of Russian intelligence mm -hmm. and says, we have evidence, we know what you're doing, you will stop. And then he goes on this, this, this pilgrimage around Washington, D.C. to brief everyone in the Gang of Eight, including McConnell, and McConnell and the Republicans say, you're, you're, we don't believe a word of this, this is all partisan, and you're lying. And, you know, of course it will be after they show how U.S. intelligence got all that information, how it was turning into an investigation, to find Americans dealing with Russian spies, and we're going to get to that point where it's going to be pretty clear that they worked against the interests yeah. of the nation. Biden made a point. He said, our administration's interest in making sure the response was bipartisan wasn't for the sake of being bipartisan. It was necessary because we needed the buy-in from state and local election administrators, many of whom were Republican partisans and or skeptical of the federal government. Uh, unfortunately, as is well documented, Senator McConnell was unwilling to help, only making matters sure. worse. Leo, call me. <laughs> says, there is nothing more to see here. Yeah, here we go. The president wants to see this in, and he wants to see them oh, does he? Uh, mm -hmm. finally come to the same conclusion that I think most everyone in America has, that there is nothing to this. They've spent the better part, most of you have spent the better part of a year looking, digging, mm. obsessing over trying to find something and no. have yet to find anything. Wow. There is no man behind the curtain. The Oz really? is Oz. Really? Most Americans think there's nothing. Most Americans. Well, that's interesting, because in this latest poll, Malcolm, 69%, that's nearly 70, Carlos. Percent of registered voters believe Mueller should be allowed to complete his uh, investigation. Concur. Hmm. Yeah, but 31 is more. 31% hmm. yeah, is most Americans. They're real Americans, and y'all's is something different. Yeah. Americans. I mean, you don't need to be a lawyer, an expert of any kind, to go, 
if you think he's going to be exonerated, you would want him to complete his investigation, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You'd want him to testify under oath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. and you know, he would have, any other president would have said, I'm going to cooperate fully, let's get to the bottom of this. Who on my staff might be, you know, working with Russian spies? Yes. Sarah Huckabee settled back with some more wisdom for you, Malcolm. You guys are absolutely obsessed with everything to do with collusion, if it has anything to do with the president. We hope that you'll take some of that same uh, obsession, energy, and fervor and direct it to some of the places where it looks like there could have been some really inappropriate and um, oh, wow. possibly illegal behavior. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh look over there. The Stop using wow. the word collusion. Yes. It's conspiracy. Yes. That's the law that is being violated yeah. here. They love that word. That was one of the official charges against Manafort, conspiracy, conspiracy against, against America. Conspiracy against the United States. Yes. I was like, that sounds bad. I suspect we'll be coming to the end of that investigation very soon. Even the first words, you guys. Uh, uh, Elaine in North, uh, in uh, California. Hi, thank you for You're taking welcome. my call. Uh, yes, go ahead. I love the show. Thank you for making me laugh every day. Thank you, go ahead. Um, Malcolm, I wanted to ask you, so way back when, when the Steele dossier first came out, mm -hmm. didn't he give it to John McCain? Yes, uh, the Steele dossier, well, first off, Steele, uh, Christopher Steele notified his, his people he knew at the FBI and turned it over to John McCain. John McCain also notified people in the yep. FBI, and later on, it fell into the hands of David Trump. Yeah, oh, there you go, and Mother Jones, yeah. So yep. my question is, um, McConnell, Ryan, Graham, Grassley, Nunez, they all knew about it before the election, right? They would and have been notified like, by the FBI of information, but maybe not specifically the whole dossier. But now they're doing everything they can to obstruct the investigation. Do you think Robert Mueller is going to question them? I suspect he's just going to go with the main... Uh, thrust of his investigation and anyone who may have peripherally uh, been involved in obstructing justice. You know, I, I, this is why I keep saying the end of March. By April 1st, the end of March, people are going to be turning yeah. because the indictment, you know, I, whether it's indictments or whether it's just cataclysmic news that the President of the United States has been found out to have been lying or confessing, which he's already done to Lester Holt, yep. uh, and that this thing is going to a very naughty place, I suspect that's when the Republican Party will either flip. They'll have to decide. Yeah. If it's another line like Jared Kushner and his money, they will have to de they will have to throw him under the bus or they'll yeah. have to determine whether they support money laundering yeah. or espionage. Or yeah, they may try to save themselves things. before the midterms. Um, speaking of look over there, this uh, representative Matt Gatz, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. This tool? Oh, that. <gasps> Help me, Jesus. Uh, okay, so these are the, the real crime, the text messages. Okay. Are these texts really missing? That's why tomorrow I'll be demanding to find out oh. where the phones are, what the operating system upgrades were, when there was an original notice that there might mm. have been missing information. Mm -hmm. Do we miss any sups or hit me backs or any emoticons that we need to be apprised of? I think one of the questions that the Democrats should ask is are there any missing texts from anyone? That has been in it, that has been interviewed by the special prosecutor right now. Correct. Which right now go, I can't count. I've only got ten fingers right here. But I, I, everyone on the White House staff, and I'm sorry to say it, if you all vote in November, there could be a Congress right. Right. that will bring all these yes. people to account individually. Right. And I, they're we trying were, to open a box. They don't messages, want to. These messages uh, we apparently back. were not maintained, Malcolm, because of issues with many of the mobile phones given to agents. So, I mean, it's just uh, they really are trying their hardest to this come is, up with this whole deep fake conspiracy. This is Hillary emails based. Next, yeah. they will ask the Russians to release them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and we'll be full circle magically. Uh, the book is The Plot to Hack America, the new book that he's working furiously on. In fact, he's been writing while he's talking to you L on my literally phone. Literally sending notes to myself. Yes. It is called The Plot to Destroy Democracy. Uh, which we hope is not going to be true. Hey, listen, if you guys got time, you've got some extra buddies out there. I could use more Twitter followers because I've got a bunch of right wingers uh, coming oh, at me. Oh, and you're in a furious contest. Oh, I've got, with a, Joy I got Reed. a right winger with a, who named Milo Somebody. He's got a million followers, and I think I deserve a million. Right. So follow we, me on Twitter at Malcolm. You have to hate more. All right. We love you, Malcolm. We love you, Coffee with Carlos as we roll along on the Stephanie Miller Show. 
Blue Oasis. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's under Lauren Adams, Fayetteville, Arkansas, USA. Or email me at ladams727 at aol.com.